United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome to the Monday, March 20th, 9.30 a.m. work session. I will ask uh, Secretary Treasurer William Pell to call the roll. William Paris. Present. Ann Walker. Here. Edward J. Warner, Jr. Present. William Pell is present. And Scott, a Scott M. Harwell is present. Really. We can, ready to go. All right. Here we are. Okay. Let's jump right into it. We've got a bit of an agenda here. Discussions, Trustee Welker, Bridge Hampton Tennis and Surf Club, Beachfront Wedding Ceremonies. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Mark to uh, chime in on this, please. But basically what's happened, and Lisa, maybe you want to chime in as well. Um, we've had a request from the Bridge Hampton Surf and Racket Club um, to, they perform many wedding ceremonies over the course of the summer. And they would like to have an application that covers all the weddings, rather than having to apply individually to for each one. So um, I don't know where which one of you guys wants to go first. Do you want to oh, sure. chime in? Yeah, sure. I know I had looked at the property online, GIS, and it is all private property owned by the Bridgehampton. Uh, tennis club um subject of course to the trustee easement which also shows on gis um there was a question this was something that joe and i discussed about the ability of the trustees to to permit at all in this particular area due to the fact that the easement created by the dongan patent was essentially one in that easement for you know getting crabs and shells things of that nature and I didn't see that necessarily as being enough to overcome private ownership interests. Um, but if the trustees were to decide, based on what I think you'll hear from Joe today, that you, you can permit um, this property, it might be appropriate, given the fact that they're a commercial entity that exists to have events, unlike private people doing individual events at a place like Circle Beach, which the trustees clearly own, uh, that may be a, a code amendment with a, a, a provision for um, a season-long permit just for places like the Bridgehampton Tennis Club that have regular events so they don't have to keep coming and having more papers processed by the office, permit by permit. Thank you, Mark. Joe, do you want to weigh in, or Lisa, or Bill? Oh, I'd like to. Yeah. The easement that we have is one that is absolute, and it was recognized by the Court of Appeals in the Betts decision, and it's more than just going for crabs and seaweed. It's an absolute passage right between the crest of the primary dune to the mean high water mark. The public always has a right of access from the mean high water mark seaward, but this is an inviolate uh, easement that we have. So the under the law, an easement creates two estates on the piece of property. There's a dominant estate, which is the easement holder, i.e. us, and the servient estate, who has to maintain and open that passage for the dominant estate, i.e. the owner of the property. Requiring them to have a permit for each function also allows for there to be adequate control for other town agencies. For example, if there are fireworks that are contemplated, it could just be a wedding ceremony, but it could be more than just a wedding ceremony. Well, the fire marshal has to sign off on any, any fireworks, and if we're in a drought condition, they usually are very strict about not giving out permits. Um, there, there are other possible considerations as well. I don't think it's such a burden or a commercial activity. They can certainly pass on the cost of every permit, but the oversight that the permit gives us and town agencies is something that we shouldn't lose by just giving out a blanket permit and they do whatever they want. And also from experience, when we give out licenses, a lot of time the person then, they, 
begin to think in a proprietary sort of way that they own certain things. And that's a prop and, and the permit itself is a property right. Uh, I, I would caution against it. I don't think it's burdensome, burdensome for them to get a permit for each individual one. All right, I do have one question, being that <clears throat> we run the endangered species, the plovers and the least terns, and there's uh, sea beach amaranth there. And um, would it be, if, if we were going to give a, a blanket permit like this, there'd be m much less oversight, am I correct, James, on the endangered species? And um, if something was to happen to them, um, we would be, being that we run the program, we would be actually first in line for any, you know, right. uh, you know fines or anything. And, and also, the way the law is written, I believe it's, it's the property that should be doing the, uh, the uh, endangered species, not the trustees, but we've taken it upon ourselves because of the easement. So it would be burdensome on, on, the, on the Bath and Tennis Surf Club to do this program on its own to employ stewards and actually have the paperwork and and all the and you know so but we know in past practices that these entities kind of like uh look the other way when the when the I, I, are they'll, there. they'll put in as much effort until they lose money and then all of a sudden the blind eye will be turned because the profit, well, the profit motive will, well, will overcome it all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of merit to what Trustee Warner is saying because I believe the law states that it's incumbent upon the landowner and the regulatory authority. And I think in the interest of maintaining integrity in the program, because if you're going to run a program without integrity, what's the point? Yeah. So you want to maintain integrity, and at the same time you want to maintain maximum public access uh, in compliance with all of this. So... You know, we have to keep a handle on it. W which we right. do because and of our program, the way we correct. run it. If we send our environmental analysts down there or one of our the coastal stewards and we find that there are birds here, we close that area. Right. It, and we time out the time the incubation of the eggs, the eggs hatch, they fledge, so then we reopen it. So we actually have a plan in action which has been functionable for 16 years I've been on this board, so and it's worked very well. And people come to us asking us for guidance in, in some of their programs. I think so we should maintain and consistency. And I think James has mentioned that in the last five years, I believe we did have a mess in that area. So, James, James do you want to weigh in? Close enough. You know, it would have affected the issues within the area. Right. Okay. So just, just to be clear, from my understanding, the request was not for the wedding party. It was just for the ceremony. But I understand all of your concerns. Bill, did you want to weigh in? No, I just I kind of agree with Joe. I think once you give up oversight and let them oversee themselves, it's subject to uh, problems. Okay, I agree. Um, and Lisa, do you want to weigh in from the point of view of the office? Um, I mean, it's paperwork for us, but that's what I do. So I don't have a problem with it. Um, but yeah, I, you know, with it, with you have to have that, you know, they set even just setting up chairs and whatnot just for a ceremony. You're you're you, they're not looking for the birds, and I, I I'm kind of with James and Joe. It wouldn't be. I mean, it is a lot of work, but hey, that's part of my job. Right. And All right. to address, Mark, your concern um, about the difference in hierarchy of easement, has this been addressed by? Well, it has if, uh, I, I believe, Ms. Lombardo has done a, a good job uh, of addressing it. I, on that limited uh, issue, I don't share his opinion, but uh, all the other points I think the trustees have brought up are quite relevant. All right, um, so I, I, I think relative to that, we should maintain consistency in what we do. I think that would make sense. Yeah, because there will be other entities that are going to ask for the same thing. And what we've done in the past is come up with a you know beach event Permit, permitting process in our office over, I would say, almost a decade, and you know it's it's starting to work very well, and it has consistency with it over this time, and I think that's what we want as a board is consistency moving forward. That's correct. 
Yeah, I mean, we can certainly fine tune the program. We've in, we've we have the intention of one of these in the, in the near future of doing that, but for the time being, it's not broke. I think we need just need to leave it as is. Okay. <coughs> so to reply to the Bridgehampton Surf and Record Club, are you happy to do a reply? In this case, I may not be the best person to reply. You, you may Jim, want, in this I'll instance, be happy to do it. given Joe's okay. Okay. opinion, uh, how think, it differs I from think mine. think Mark in the town's opinion is a little bit different than our special attorney's opinion. So I think I'd rather defer the, to Joe and our special counsel to have them uh, do the reply. Okay. Be Maybe you could it. just run it I'll past give you us his before. I'll give you a Mr. Contact, Moore, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could just run it past us, Joe, before oh, absolutely. you send I'll, it. I'll, that would I'll be have good. it after tomorrow, and I'll put it in your mailboxes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Special Counsel Lombardo. Okay. I um, conclusion of the discussion that we had on the work session. Move right on to general permit of determinations. Uh, I have one on for three Garb <coughs> Lane. I see Mr. Billy Mack is here. It is a first coastal application. Are you, you up to speed on this one, or is this Aaron? Uh, no, I'm pretty up to speed, I think. Hey, hey Billy, back. Right? Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good Billy. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Billy Mac, first coastal for the applicant. You got a few of these on here. I'm almost feeling like while you're here, we should just blow through the ones I that you have. I mean, your mercy, whatever. You know. <laughs> Rest of the board's you thoughts are on that. I just you pretty nice, Joel. Fine. Just want to be efficient. Yes, I you know. Go as yeah. quick as or you slow four of them as you all want. Yeah, just want to be efficient. So you want to reconstruct in place approximately 251 feet of existing bulkhead. Yes. Um, 214 square feet of existing wood ramp. 138 square feet of existing wood walkway and approximately 61 square feet of existing wood deck. Increased top elevation of bulkhead ramp walkway and deck by 18 inches. You want to do 100 cubic yards of clean sand fill within 10 feet. Land where the bulkhead as a buffer and plant with beach grass 12 inches. In the Correct. Center. Um, so you're familiar with this uh, location? Oh, James, you want to put some pictures up here? There you go. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, a very old bulkhead. Right. It's got a slip that's incorporated inside of it um, with some, uh, a couple of decking sections uh, that are not too much. And um, it, it's, you know, it's in need of repair. It's, 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 time. it's in need of repair, but you know, I don't agree with the 18-inch rise. Uh, I don't see how you're going to benefit from that with the ramp there based on the way the total topography is of this property and how the house is situated. I, I could see going with like half of that because you'll, you'll be matching to the adjoining properties. But if you actually get on site and take a look at the rack line, you've got a lot of water that's coming straight up through that boat ramp. So even if you raise it by that much, you're still going to have all that water funneling in here. Take a look. See where the rack line is? Uh -huh. You're running all the way up to there. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's coming straight up through the boat ramp. See, take, take a look at this. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you know what I mean? So if there. you come up 18, I think you may create more of a problem than a solution um that's it anyway yeah so if you if you come up like nine match the neighbor you yeah. see that gap if you match the neighbor you know buffer it nicely you're still going to have water coming up on this property when you have the high tides because of the boat ramp yeah. so i don't see that uh you know well, we did, we did show some, you can see there, yeah, there's the it rack go, line. You see the rack line? But yeah. you see the way the house is then goes a lot higher. Yeah. So I I don't think that, it's not going to solve your problem because the boat ramp's just going to let that water be the pinch point where it enters the property, mm -hmm. which it is right now. And elevating the bulkhead, it's going to be almost like capturing the water, so not allowing it to go 
back into the bay where you know where it came from. So it's you know it's gonna it's gonna really change the uh, whole environment unless you bring a lot of fill in there and raise up that whole entire area. Well, we are proposing to dredge uh, the slip that's there right now and use that as backfill behind the bulkhead. But okay. you can, yeah. But that's a ramp. You know what I mean? Well, that's the, yeah. The slip part that goes from a ramp to a slip. Yeah. So we're gonna bring everything up, um, ideally 18 inches, because that's well, I honestly believe that's what's needed. That, uh, this is low tide, high tide. The water's over the bulkhead. What yeah. is what is the ramp made out of? It's all wood. It's wood. It's so wood. I, I I could see the nine. You know what I mean? I could see nine based on the conditions there, but 18, I, I just don't see how you're gonna. Well, I think, you know, this is one of these things that we're trying to get ahead of with respect to any new bulkhead that we're building should factor sea level rise, which is a given fact at this point. It is, but it's going to sea level rise you, right up the boat you, ramp. What are you protecting, though? It's going to well, ramp the boat ramp. What eventually, you this land, as in others, will get redeveloped and they'll backfill behind it to accommodate. Yeah, yeah but the, you have a bulkhead. long buffer area and a long, gradually sloping. Mm -hmm lawn which would accommodate any sea level rise for many years it's not like you have a bulkhead where you want to raise it up the houses is direct is directly in back of it or there's structures or swimming pools where you'd be protecting the actual structure you have a bulkhead now and you have uh, it looks like about a, a you know 80 or 90 feet of lawn there which has a gradual slope which is going to you know do the mitigation as far as wave energy and flooding. You know, that 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 area is gonna be the the thing that mitigates it most. Raising the bulkhead up, it's just gonna come around it, up the up the uh, launching ramp and flood it anyhow. I'm I, also I, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm also questioning um, if there's two hundred and fifty one linear feet of bulkhead, the need for two hundred and fifty one feet of wood decking to go along it. Oh, it's, it's just that one section on the right-hand side of the slip. That's the only decking. And that's been there forever. So it's, uh, I don't know, okay. dimension on that? So is this piece 46 yeah. feet by three, three feet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's oh, okay. The, the, so, the hash mark is just the area, disturbed area just, that okay. will be backfilled. So just, what I'm also seeing, though, mm -hmm is that um, I'm looking for the language in relationship to the buffer behind the bulkhead. Okay, so that's um, right in there. Okay. Okay. 10 foot okay. wide buffer area to be planted with beach grass. Oh, okay. On yeah, it's on, it's on this cover sheet. Okay. All right, good. I just but then here's my other question. Uh -huh. So this is a fair amount of bulkhead. So I'm wondering if your client would be open to the possibility of um, a pilot project here with a permeable reactive barrier instituted behind this bulkhead. Like We're that. starting to move yeah. towards that, and uh, it's being done as pilot projects uh -huh. in other areas. This would be one of the first in a residential setting. Okay. So. I don't I'd be know, encouraged but to encourage the property owner to do that and happy to But uh, but you would still you would have to make the determination of where the flows you know, there's a lot of work that's gotta be done so, ahead of that. So, right? so Cornell Cooperative Extension, Marine Division, who have done quite a lot of work on that, said that they would be very open to having a discussion when we find situations where this might be a good yeah. And that's a phone call Yeah, to I them. reached out to them a couple of years ago to ask for kind of specifications that we can incorporate in almost all of our bulkheads. I know at the time they weren't, uh, they didn't have specifications that were, they were willing to share. They Maybe they do now. Yeah. So, so you want to put this on hold? You can now make that phone uh, call, see I mean, if I they can. I prefer not to with respect to that. This is... You know, well, it's, I think it's more complicated than that because it's it's putting uh, you know test wells and de determine the groundwater flow in the area. So it, it's it's a it's I think expensive. it's a, it's a 
a process of more than just a bulkhead permit. I think it's uh, a couple a year well, of the test well, wells being there, determining the well, it, water flow. Well, you have to determine then, if it's going to work, and then to see if it's yeah. actually. I mean, I'm open to experiment. I mean, if, if the I water is this is the project to do it on, but I'm well, but that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah. yeah. So I think a phone call because Ron Paulson and Molly Grafham have a fair amount mm -hmm. of just innate right so <coughs> knowledge, and I think a phone call would give us a bit more information whether this is a good idea or not. Even I'm just looking at the linear feet, right? And that this is a really healthy, for the most part, water body. So. Okay, but if I'm, not, I'm open to that option. I don't want it to delay this. No, no, understood. You know, well, how could how how's, you know a phone call? Not gonna not right. A phone call. I'm happy to have well, a phone well, call. we'd have to hold it for now then for that's you to make a phone well, call. How about this? We get the permit and I modify it to accommodate whatever Ron suggests. Well, that could, that could be dangerous. Well, let's, yeah, let's, I let's, think that's dangerous. I think let's, I think holding it, think, allowing you to make a phone call, at least make the inquiry to see what needs to be done, and then come back at the next meeting and say, oh, I had this conversation. They think it would be a year or, or it's something that could be done part and parcel with the project. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know if the applicant's willing to hold the application over right. for that. Well, could, could, that until ne right until <laughs> next meet, next work sure. session. Okay. Can we just back up for a second? It's going to have to go to the next work session. Yeah, I mean, when it right. yeah. stamp plans, but right. also, uh, are you going to change it to 9 inches well, or 18 inches? Yeah, Th that's all. Well, okay. I just want to back up for that. a second. Let's Sorry. just back up. I just didn't mean to go to No, no, it's all right. It's all right. And everybody gets excited <laughs> about this stuff. It's, yeah. Let's just back up for a second. So, I looked at, you know, I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. Boots on the ground. Let's take a look. It's got to be done. I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I just, I don't want to mess with the adjoining property owners and, you know, I understand sea level rise, I, I want to accommodate that, but it's going to come right up that ramp, you know what I mean, that water's going to have to go somewhere, and, you know, I, well, I we think... We are proposing to take the ramp elevation also up 18 inches, so that whole back side comes right. up Right, but you know what, I don't... And I get, it's thought was it's, that no matter what it's, it's going to get flooded because there's a low it, section behind it well um, and the adjoining property it's you're going to you know it's going to come up the ramp it's going to come up the adjoining properties and that's why when we went there and looked at it and took measurements and kind of looked what you wanted to do it seemed as though based on just studying it being boots on the ground and looking at everything if you did come up what came up more that nine ten inch Look, brought it that way with what you had, um, with the way it does bump up where the house is, it looked like it would alleviate a lot of the issues. And like Trustee Warner was saying, the house is built quite high and up and back. So, you know, even if the water does come up through the boat ramp and, and whatever under those scenarios, I don't think the house is going to be in danger if you take a look at where that rack line is. So, I just... Sometimes it's like, you know, no, maybe we're going too far. You know right. what I mean? I don't want to go too far. I want to resolve the issue reasonably without going too far. And when we spent the time there looking at it, you know. I get it. And it, it, it can be a very subjective thing. I mean, right now our only reference is the neighbor's height of their bulkhead. And if that was... Well, we were looking at that and the rack line relative to the house. You know what I mean? So when you, when you have a... a, a quite a substantial rack line, it, it, it does indicate what's going on there. And you can kind of see looking at the adjoining properties and seeing where it is on this property. And, you know, I get I get it. You know, I want to work with you on this and I, I want to make those adjustments to accommodate what your concerns are. I just don't want to, you know, overkill it and create some issue. That's all, you know. The other way to look at it would be to put in a low cell bulkhead and let it flood. Yeah, I don't know if the owner would be willing to do that. Just a thought. Understood. You have a lot of material that's going to end up in the bay if you do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not for that, it's but the, I... It's uh, 65 cliff again. Yeah. Yes, I, I think, you know, I, I get what you want to do. I understand. I went down there and I, I studied this. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I want to resolve the issue. I'm, my concern is that are we going too far relative to the total picture that's going on there? I want to get it right, not not create a problem of unintended consequences if we go too far. Well, I mean, you can tell you know, this entire property is bulkheaded, so any flood relief will be relieved off that southern portion of the property um, that is not bulkheaded. The, the idea of getting the bulkhead higher is to minim not only to get the flood waters reduced that overtop it during spring high tides or normal storm high tides, it's also to mitigate the wave erosion that happens during storm events once they crest the bulkhead. At a low bulkhead, even if it's six to eight inches higher, the wave energy will still crest over the top and do land erosion, landward of the bulkhead. It is critical that we get these bulkheads up higher. Yeah. What's and the protect. fetch? What's the fetch here? Uh, uh, you do have an odd fetch. It comes in from the uh, so back from to the picture, really, James, this is from tucked, the south. This yeah. is yeah. tucked in. It, it, it is. It is. It is. It is tucked in. Um, you do get wave energy that comes straight out of Chinnacock Bay there. Yeah, south. And south. No, south not south. that. This not is heavy. tucked further down the creek. Yeah, yeah well, it's tucked further down the creek. This one. Not, not heavy at all, but I, it does happen. I don't have a problem with raising it. I just think that if we go to 18, it seems like it is tucked in. It seems like it's a bit much. And when I went down there and just threw the tape measure on it, looked at it, looked at the rack line, looked at the adjoining property, you know, walk, walked it, you know, spent some time doing, you know, a boots on the ground analysis. It looked to me like a nine to ten inch raise mm -hmm. made made sense. And when I when I take my tape measure up to eighteen and I start to look around and everything else, I, you know. And try and figure out how that topography is going to work out with everything else around it. It just seemed like we, we, we're picking this number of 18. Right. And the reason why we picked the number of 18 is because the state gives you this broad brush right. of up to 18. But I don't, think, I don't think that it's the right fit for the property. I do agree with raising it. I just don't think that based on... Let me ask you, uh, I'll ask everybody, during the storm that we had at Christmas where the tides were extremely high and there was a lot of wave energy in the area. Was there any excessive damage to the property? Erosion damage? You can see the landward of the bulkhead, there is some soil loss. It, is it a lot of soil loss? Or yeah, is it, it's, it's a little it, bit it, of You can see the rack line. We no, were I, there. I, I, yeah. The rack line's one thing, but it is literally wave energy on the bulkhead. So I, mean, I didn't see soil loss. It. Yeah, so, I, I did not see soil loss there so when I was there. I did see a big rack line. So here's another thought. Uh -huh. Another pilot project that's being done or yeah. being discussed is a living shoreline in front of the bulkhead to mm -hmm. mitigate wave. I, I just want to point wave something wave out. Energy against the bulkhead. Right. I just want to point something out to everybody. Mm -hmm. If you look to the property, I guess it's to the north. You see that white. The neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. You see that white? They keep moving that cursor. That was a so fender, right, yeah. James? No, right. You know what I mean? So water, water, water came, you know, came came way up. I mean, a rack line from that, you know, super tide that we had December twenty third or whatever the date yeah, was, it's, it's brought that pretty far up it's, it's, there. It's, it's you know what I mean? So no. it didn't well, get to the house. The house is high. You should no, raise it, but. I just think that, you know, maybe we need to take a look at what that number really is instead of just broad brush going with the maximum limit that the state puts on their side of it. That's all I'm saying, Billy Mac. I, you know, one thing we have to also keep in mind, the bulkheads that we're building nowadays are lasting over 50 years. Right. And we have to envision this property 50 years from now. Right. There will likely be an upland development, I don't know, maybe a renovation of the house or right. something. That Probably. may include some additional either lifting or fill that right. would almost we, eliminate the issue there. Right. But we got a lot of time, you know, 50 years, I, I get it, it's blinking of an eye. You know what I mean? I was running around here in elementary school and now I'm heading for, you know, for <laughs> 60 myself. But, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but... And I do agree, you do need to raise, we need to, you know, this property needs, but I just, to, to go on our permit, mm -hmm. just to broad brush to match 
the state's okay, how, permit. How about if we say this? How about if we say 12 inches as opposed to the 18? It will be a little bit higher than the neighbors, and I think that will, I could probably, I know that this property owner was very adamant I, about going I, as high as we can. I, I get it, I, which is why, feet. Which is uh, why I went there and spent a lot of time looking at right. it. I brought my tape measure. I brought my environmental analyst there. We we took a hard look at it and said, yeah, it's got to come up, but we got to get this number right, right. so it works. You know what I mean? J James, do you want to weigh in since you were at the site? Well, I agree with Scott. I mean, we talked about this, and if their bulkhead was at nine inches above. and I mean, it shows spring high water well below existing. So if you're going up to proposed at 18, or, you know, I don't think it's going to be make that much of a difference. So James, I, I what kind of grasses are currently grass. behind the bulk? It's just grass. It's just grass. It's yeah. Yeah. Right. It's so if you put that buffer in, I think if you if you roll with the you know the, the nine ten like we put it on there, <clears> you do a nice buffer behind that. You know, do you know do your program? Just get it adjusted right. I think that for the next fifty, I think you're in good shape. Gigantic. Category four storm, all bets are off no matter what you do. But I think that, you know, and the fact that the house does bump up and it's and it's going up there high, I don't know. I think. Yeah. But I, Scott, on, on the south side of this property, it's not bulkheaded. Right. So if you got a, a, a severe storm, it's coming just around the flank. You're, it, it's, you're, it's you're coming. Not, you're right. not going to really solve anything, you know. Well, but that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if he goes to match this well, over here. Yeah. And does his thing with the nice buffer. I yes. think he's got a better thing, but I think if you go another nine beyond that, I don't think. I think it's like a false sense of security he's going to have. I it's going to create a hollow. Mm -hmm. It's going to create like a swale between the house and the bulkhead, and that water is going to pond and puddle there, and it's going to stay there, and then it's going to be another problem. Right. I don't well, I, know, I you know I don't know what their future plans are, but I know they want to go as high as possible. Right. But, the but, the, but but the house it was not in harm of this last storm, and I don't think it was in harm during Sandy. If, if there's an issue with the house, the house should be raised, and this property should re, 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 remain pretty much in the same state it is now. Raising it nine inches is going to allow you to ensure a four-inch lift, which will reduce the sheet runoff from you know heavy rains but raising it even higher it's going to pitch it back the other way and it's and i think it's going to be it's going to be problematic and i don't think it's going to protect the house or the upland property because it's going to get outflanked i mean okay i mean that's that's you know we spent a lot of time there looking yeah. at this and we're, we're not fighting you on raising it at all billy mac uh, <laughs> we wanted you know because we're looking at the adjoining property we're just trying to find a yeah. a reasonable yeah. You know, number right. that will it's solve the issue. Instead of the 18, can we say 12? Because I know that this property owner was specifically out of it. They've been here. This is their, I don't know, second gen or third generation owning this house in the same family. So they are. They live this property, and they every day say, "We wish we could have this bulk get higher." And I, I, I know that 18 doesn't sound like it's even on. The, I, 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 I don't way. see, I don't, yeah, and I don't see that as really, you know, I, I mean, just picture that bulkhead. You see the bulkhead, the neighbor? Mm -hmm. Picture another nine inches higher than that. Take that right there. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but take that and then go nine inches beyond that. You yeah, move that over. Well, that's about eight now, so, so that, we go another four above that. But but even look at that compared to what you got going on yeah, next the door. The adjoining property, the grass is still green, and, and the other property that we're talking about is brown from where it flooded. Right. So if you raise the same height, evidently the the higher property to the north didn't get as flooded as this property did. Mm -hmm. So you they, it'd be it, almost balancing the the uh, that, the shore footage of all the properties. It's, you know, no one has right. more, no one has less. That's what we were trying yeah. to do when we went there. We were like, you know what, we agree, we, you know, this can come up, but let's get the number right. And we did exactly what you just did. We looked at that adjoining property, looked at the situation and said, all right, look, I get it. This, this looks like it will work out with what your plan is. If we go beyond it, it looks like we're going too far. 
So I know everybody wants to get the max they can get us like a negotiation. But we're trying to just get yeah. it to where it makes sense. You know what I mean? Where you, you're going up, and I think it's going to be a dramatic difference well, on the I'm, property. I'm sure that the property owner next door will, in the next 10 years, come to you guys for a bulkhead redo, and he's going to ask for the same thing. So we're going to be... Well, let's look at that. I mean, is there... I, mean, is I know that property, and I know the property owner. And right. I, we, we were involved in that doc. 20 years ago. Right. So is there a picture, you know, James, is there another angle of the neighbor's bulkhead that picks up the condition of that or? You know, I mean, he's got lawn all the way down to the end. So most well, people, people, are, there, right? people are in violation of their permits. They, everyone comes and says, oh, you know, we're going to do this, and then they do what they well, want. I don't know. I mean, that, bulk, that bulkhead's ancient. Well, but still, I mean, you know. I don't know if it had the condition on Yeah, but the southerly side is, there's no protection there, so the water's just going to come around it. You're, you're, right. You're making a fork. But you can see that little scour that I'm talking about from the wave tripping. <coughs> yeah. That's right there. So, you know, when it, storms come, they do take a little soil with them. Yeah, the bulkhead shot. There's no doubt this has to be done, Billy. Um, there's no doubt. It's just that, you know, going from. As opposed to the 10 inches that you're. Suggesting, how about 12? I Wait a minute, 10. I thought I said 9. 9 inches. <laughs> you said 9 to 10. We, we measured. <laughs> I, I would like to stick with the 9. Uh, anybody else have an opinion? I, I feel comfortable with the 9 inches because the whole property is not protected by a bulkhead and you don't have any structure directly behind it that's going to be affected by a storm surge or you have, you have a lot of lawn that can mitigate wave energy and uh, flooding. And the house is elevated, so I don't see any need for uh, a bulkhead higher than what Scott is and James are talking about. I think nine inches would serve raising the property up slightly and, uh, you know, giving them a new bulkhead where you don't have to worry about any, you know, damage from bulkhead failure. Okay. See, I mean, that property is all nice and green next door. All right. In, in the interest of moving things along, I'll suggest to the property owner nine-inch rise, see what they say. I'll well, also bring up the uh, PRVs. I, I, okay. I, think they, I think people have to have an understanding of the fact that there's a, a difference in the manner by which the trustees handle this versus the way the state does. The state's got that... They almost have a mandate. They right, they got a right. They got a broad brush. But when you have a conversation with them and you say, "Well, how's it? well, no, you guys control that locally. You're looking at your local conditions, and they got to comply with all permits." So, out of respect for you and you know, but, and the and the you know the applicant, we went down there and we spent a lot of time looking at this to try and figure out how do we you know work with you to get this thing done where we're not going too far. And, well, I think and the state I also allows uh, parting structures in, in uh, some of the villages where we no longer have jurisdiction where we would say no and come up with a better plan. So I think we should stick with our guns. Right you gotta, we're, okay. We'll clarify on the ocean beach. Yeah. On the jurisdiction. I know. Side. But that's on the ocean beach. But we had, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. The that's a different we're conversation, but he has Thank a you, question. Billy. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. He on, has a question. On the yeah. two neighbors on either side. Uh huh. You said they're going to be in for bulkheads. Well, this guy specifically. I think the guy to the uh, south. I don't know him. Maybe you could check with him. Maybe go go up all at one time. Yeah, I don't know that. Maybe then you get your 12 inches or 14 inches if they walk. If both of them go up. Yeah. All three of them. You're forgetting that there's that section. That's not. No. Um, yeah, that, that's a good, yeah. you know, natural relief area. Exactly. Yeah. It is. I, I, I yeah. think that your your plan is a, is a fine plan. I just think that okay. adjusting to the site specific, you know, looking at what's going on in the adjoining properties and taking into consideration the elevation of the house. I, okay. I How think you're going to change. Uh, again, the issues move things along. If I get the property owner to be okay with nine inches and we bring engineer plants showing the nine inches going to be advanced. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I don't yeah. know. It has to be on the next work. Yeah, it's got to be on the next work site, but we can move. Review the, yeah. uh, yes. the stamp plants. Right, so we got to move. We, okay. could, we could 
But if we, we do can the agree. nine inch and get to stamp lines by next thing, then that's fine. Right, then you're, you're, you're on your way to the next step versus you're calling about permeable reactive barriers. No, 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 he's still calling. He's I'm still calling. Still call well, no, I, I get I it. But yeah, if yeah. They're, and if they're willing to go forward, then, then we'll do that. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Look, if the flows, if it makes sense that it's going to do the job it's supposed to do based on the inflows, that's the by point. all means. That's the yeah. phone call. Yeah, by all means, if they have yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm hoping, uh, you know, uh, Ron, Ron has gotten to the point where he's got a kind of like a template, like, okay, this is what you want to do. And I, I've worked with him on this years ago, so I, I'd love to see that progress. Oh, he's he's on top of his game. Yeah. yeah. Coupling it with the uh, sanctuaries that we have with the college, Cornell, and the Governor's Clean Water Task Force, which is just outside of this, would be a wonderful thing. We're doing the, the, the local residents are buying in for the whole, you know, yeah. project. Yeah, just to the south of yep. this area is where we have our major sanctuary. Yep. Right. So, so right. I think it's a, if we could get something like that, it'd be a good a good project. Yeah, and just so people know, the power of uh, PBRs or their like filtration systems from the upwater, upland water into the area that can kind of filter <coughs> out some of that negative stuff that we're on. All right, so we're, we're, we're good with this plan that we had of advancing the subject to your clients. Yes. Yep. Yes. And your stamp, stamp plans. Plans. And plans. Update cover sheet. Yep. yep. That's a subject. That's okay. While you're there, let's just let's just clear right through your stuff here. Okay. 45 Ram Island Drive. Yes, that's a renewal. That's no changes? No changes at all. What's it for? It's a bulkhead reconstruction that's uh, over on the Ram Island where there, um, it's a boathouse. So, so um, it's a partial. Yeah. It, it's Justin Pell. Um, I work for the people, um, but I have. I think I can make a decision. Um, it's basically the same it's plan. What it's it was just a renewal. I just, yeah. just renewal. I just didn't remember well, it. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's not it a renewal. renewal? Yeah. It, uh, it's they get expired. It's expired. Yeah. They had so it's, it's, new application. Yeah, but it has nothing changed. It's the same as what would yeah. have renewed if they got yeah. it in on time. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And they did get caught. Um, the Bay Consulate actually did stop them, and they they stopped work right away. Right away. They, yeah. Actually, what happened was so everybody knows we started. We we sent in a commencement notice, started the work. And we had a issue with the pilings being delayed for delivery. So once we got the pilings, we resumed. Didn't realize that the permit had expired. Stopped work. And we're back here. Um, and then he's going to there's some green wood. What he's going to remove? Yeah, there's um, some treated non-compliant issues that are being resolved at the same time. Let's clean it up. Okay. So you're good. I'm good with it. Okay. And I don't know if you want to keep going. Yeah, I do. Let's get your stuff list. done. 74 point me cox. That's a that science. No, it's uh, no, up to five. 351? 351 bridge lane. 351 bridge. This is uh, oh, one sorry, we sorry. back and forth with with respect to that um, catwalk that goes out into uh, Sag Pond. And we pulled that back. Um, substantially, and I think you guys were happy with this last revision that we had. It now projects approximately 35 feet. 35 feet into the pond. Yeah, a little bit less off the shoreline, but if, if you measure from the shoreline, but 35 feet from the turning point. Um, and this seemed to be right more in keeping with other docks. Um, yep. Yeah, it's kind of that tucked in, in there. character. Yeah. At it, this little section. Yeah. Yeah, keeping the so character. It's a pretty simple project. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of in that little cove. Or doesn't one of, stick, one of it doesn't stick coves. out like it yeah. originally no. We're proposed. attempting to get the two and a half feet. Yeah. We all decided we're scaling that back. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I'm okay with this to move forward. If we you just need stamp stamp plan, stamp so plan. advanced yeah. subject. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have um, one of Trustee Parish's 541. <coughs> 541 Main Street in Quiag. Mm -hmm. This has been on Busy a few day times. Bill. Busy day. 
Yes, this is um, <coughs> bulkhead reconstruction, and um, I think the hang-up we had last time was the neighbor was concerned about their access. The easement, the walk on their easement. easement. Yeah, and, you, and we have resolved that. You move the uh, the bulkhead return back nine feet. Mm -hmm. and we met with the property owner, uh, the adjacent property owner had, who has a legal easement over that. Uh, corner of the bulkhead to a dock that was, is permitted. So essentially they moved this, they originally proposed the new bulkhead or the reconstruction of the bulkhead here. Uh, they moved it to the other side of the dock which is on the other side of the easement um, so that the it bulkhead. doesn't block the right of way for yeah. the neighbors. It would have created a step for them. Right? Yeah. So rather than create the step we just push the return back. Okay. So there is there a natural shoreline then where the where there is the a natural is? shoreline right there exactly right okay yep and they launch you know boats and stuff from that okay I'm good with that everyone else is yep yep and that's good that's stand plan so I can advance completely. okay uh, five twenty eight five twenty eight Five twenty eight Dune Road, West Hampton Beach. Here yeah, you're, you're proposing to construct a new four foot by one hundred forty foot forty eight feet catwalk pier. No treated wood to be used. Open <coughs> material to be used for catwalk pier decking and stairs. Um, we have an issue with the length of the dock. Yeah, this is well over the um, 100, 100 foot. Mm -hmm. um, You're looking for 148 uh, feet. <coughs> James, can you zoom in just a bit? Where, where are we as far as water depth? That's difficult to see. Uh, Thank you. I think we scaled that back to 100 feet. That's the latest plan. So this is So we don't have the latest plan we're looking at? Yeah. This is the latest plan. I'm sorry. Hold it back to 100. James, do you, you have the latest yeah. plan? Wait, what's the date? No, I don't no. Uh, the same. vision was 10th. 10th March, of 10th. March 10th. March 10th. James, so the one you're looking at is June 10th, I think. Um, so it's e the most hmm. current one is 100 feet? Yeah. I don't yeah, have that. Right. We don't have it? We don't. Mm -hmm. we need. Can you check the. Uh, yeah, that was oh. mailed to you guys March 10th. Okay, it was today. You haven't built the uh, 20th. There it is. March 6th. So this, mm -hmm. just, Let me just, look just to continue yeah. the conversation, <coughs> this, um, the same one. this now fits the pier line. And this is for kayaks or paddle boards, Pretty right? Much. Yeah. Yeah, so I won't, you know, swim in. So do you okay. have a, you have some steps at the end of steps it? Yeah. yeah, I see that. Okay. It's got steps. It's identical to the next door neighbor, except for that one has a float. It's the, the same tent. depth of water and... Uh, do you have anything in there, Bill? Mm -hmm. I don't think no. we received so that's, that. That's good Mark for six six and paddle. It's, it's one, yeah. Yeah. It's one yeah. foot of water. Back yeah, it's one foot of water. And and if you went all the way... Yeah. At 100 feet, we make it basically 200. Did we, did we need an advisory? It's a letter for this? I think it's mostly on our property. No, okay. we don't. No, we don't. Okay. No, no. I couldn't nope. see. No, definitely not. Not for this one. Yeah, this is uh, oh, we'll back to the 100 feet. Yeah. Yep. Very there it is. There's the steps. Okay. There's the end of the dark. It's the same depth of water as it. <coughs> Nothing in there, Bill. Right? Properties. Nope. Looks okay. like the same length, to a little bit shorter. Okay. All right. We want this. No, we just yes, we want to submit that one. Yes. For, uh, All right. Stamp it, that would be and as long as the board's okay with and, that. And right yes. ahead of you, you're almost at you're almost at one and a half. So I mean that's even good for a paddle foot well, paddle. Okay. Kind of so. Look at it quickly. And okay, you got it. Really. The docks are about the same. Get the depth. okay from the same Jim. Line. So you good, Trusty Parish? Yeah, if it's uh, meet the blue book, James. Blue book. I'm gonna give that to him. Yeah, you have any that too. Bill? Not sure. You can you can take a look and, yeah. and then I'll, I'll uh, stamp it. And you have a cover sheet in there too. Uh, are they stamped plans, Billy, or are they just uh, they're not revised plans? They're not. So, yeah. 
So, we'll, so we need a cover sheet. If we're good with that, we'll, we'll, uh, we have a cover do. sheet. So you need the new one. Yep. Oh, we no. need stamp plants. Well, no. It's Which one is this for Quia? Construct. No, four it's by for so round forty-five twenty. So we need cover sheet. Dune Road. The stamp next plans. We need everything. Cover. Yeah. You mailed it to us. Yeah. I'm gonna look right now. I have access. All right. It's easy to keep this bill. I'll get. I'll make sure that. You Depending, having all the proper paperwork, everybody's good with this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're okay. just looking for. Uh, you know, and it's going right. So I think right. that's all you have. You today, have one right? on. Uh, uh, then I got general Holly. permit application six Holly Lane. Oh, you got another one. Well, that one's for later. That's well. That yeah. That's for determination. Oh, that's that's yeah. just moving it. That, forward. That's that's yeah, just yeah. us checking your stamp plans. That's, that's yeah. 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 for determinations. I think you're done. Fantastic. Yeah. See that? Saving yeah. everybody time here. Thank you very much. Appreciate See it. You See you next time. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Billy. The next one is Shannon Bradley, David Silverstein, 49 Waters Edge. Yes. Dusty Pal. Come on up. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. Good. So it's definitely going to be a learning experience for me. I've been here before. Okay. Um, I do have the client, David Silverstein, and his wife um, are the owners of the property. And they also live in the cove where I, I live. So. Um, Can you sign in, please? Sure. Not uh, really sure what you're going to um, ask. Could you do... Describe right off the bat what are you looking for because it's very vague. What you sure you, you um, in the application itself. Um, what okay. you what do you want to permit for? Uh, okay, so there's a bulkhead that exists. There's a wood retaining wall. Uh, there's a sand area, a ramp, a floating dock, and a wood walkway. Um, I think did I say retaining wall. Some yes. of a retaining wall. Um, I did provide ahead of time in the application pictures. And yeah, but wh what do you want? It, a new legalized. Look, legalized. Like, yeah, it already has yeah, existed yeah. for a very, very long time. So the bulkheads is a big trouble because we don't legalize. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm not really. It's pre-existing. You have to go back see so how. So all of this work was done without permits. I'm sorry. How now. long ago? Yeah. Oh. yeah, a long time ago. It's yeah. it's old. That's the debate. Is that. This, uh, you couldn't. Did you find anything back in oh. such? Okay, so I put a lot of um, a lot of time into trying to find out, so I could give you guys the correct answers Good. as far as the timeline. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. And um, what I have here is probably the oldest piece of material. Um, Cove was built in 1950, Southampton Cove, and the house was built in 1972. The homeowner that is. The current owner bought the house in 2005. This stuff existed. There should be aerial photos. But we also have a stamped plan showing. Oh boy. I don't want to let anybody have this because this there's actually, only one. Really this it's the original and it's older. older. Um, are, there, are these the house plans? You know what? Uh, it's stamped. I'm having trouble myself reading who it's stamped by, but it's definitely stamped by the town. And what it is is I want to find the right page. It is probably the building plans. Um, There's a bulkhead on the building plan? Uh, there is. Everything that is in question is listed on here and was stamped by the town as accepted, but I have to leave it to your expertise and your review to see what I have here because this is just... So do you have the uh, property owner's name of 1972? I do. I have all of the information And you looked that. in our files uh, for the property owner to see if he's, if we have a permit for any of these? I stores? did. And the problem, it's not that it's a problem, but what we need to have your tell you guys uh, decide for us is that there was a homeowner only one homeowner prior to this it went into an estate and then the trustee sold it to my client 
um, growing up there, I know a lot about the property because I'm actually, my grandparents, it's their house in the cove. I know of this house because they were their friends. Um, as far as I can remember, and I'm 52, <laughs> that did exist, but that's just me giving you my word. Um, what I can tell you is that if you look back timeline, I did foils with everybody. I did a foil with you guys, I did a foil with the DEC. Um, at first, I was given no information from the DEC. I received several emails saying come to them with an appointment, which I did, um, you know, sign up to do. And then they called me and said there wasn't enough information and canceled the appointment. I have that. I printed out that um, email that the DEC had sent me. I just have so much information here, so bear with me. Um, then the foil with the Board of Trustees itself came up with nothing. Um, but then yet now here I have something, I got information from the DEC saying that all, all uh, the things listed in our application should remain. So I made copies because this is new. I was able to just get my hands when I made three copies and yeah. do apologize. I didn't know how many people would be here. All right, so we've got to stamp something in here, right? So I do yeah. want to provide, if I could. You said it to Lisa. Yeah, she's okay. stamp. She'll stamp it in. In your correspondence with the DEC, because they basically started the permitting process for bulkheads in 1976. Now, do they have any uh, thing on file from this property from 76 to current? They, they didn't. This was from 2008 from the current homeowner. He went to them and said he had been through the conservation board. He had been before you guys, I believe, and he had been before the DEC. I don't mean before physically. What, but he, what year was he in front of us? Because we can check the minutes. No one has. What's the problem? I don't yeah. think. Yeah. I, it, so what, what, what's leading you to make that statement? Mm, There's no yeah. record of this. Because they did the foil. And it says he was before us, but there's nothing. Because he, he represented to me that he had been, and thus forth, he's always provided me the best information possible. Um, we got do, you, do you know what, what yeah. time frame time. it was? No, he bought the property in 2005. I, will want, to, I want to say, and this is just a, a guess, 2006, 2007, but I was hoping it was in your records. It, it I mean, should be. If it should, the but we, we we could do a, we could do a search, search on it, but we need some but she did. time. Because, because this bulkhead that you're presenting here mm -hmm. is not that old of a bulkhead. I mean, no. it, in, in the scheme of bulkheads, it's probably from the 90s, right, Billy? Yes. Yeah. You because prior to that, it looks like they had like six inches on top of it. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's it's um it's treated lumber. I mean, it looks like treated lumber, and it you know. And it has, uh, you know, four by fours or six by six pilings. So it's the use of dimensional lumber has not been, you know, old that old because they used to use regular pilings. So, I mean, I would. I have no disagreement with any of that. I do agree just by looking at it, and, and I'm a layman. I, mean, I would say the same. I mean, but, so um, so doing a search in our minutes of the property owner's name. Would it be in, uh, at, at the time, would it be in specifically in his name? Would it possibly be in an LLC, which I would say probably not back no. then. I'm just trying to, you know, or something. The only like thing, they could have, it could have been a bulkhead. They could have came and put new, new um, f six by sixes in front of it and new top ledger on yeah. it inside yeah. and kept the same thing, but I doubt it. And what I did is I did, when I did the foil, I did list, um, the prior, you know, the original owner's name, the trustee who it went into. I listed as many people as I could as far as names. The one thing that I think that m might exist is that this is on a corner property, like not a corner, but like it's on an angle where you guys have an easement. Um, and there's, Ro I think it's Robin. There's another street there. In the Robin. Robin. Yeah. Robin. Yeah. So back in the day, yeah. I mean, it used to be like two trees to the left of. Well, I mean, could the property Born. address have changed? I mean, if That's it was what I'm some, yeah. I mean, it does. Yeah, I mean, it could have changed. So yeah. you definitely want to look at the tax map number if you're going to do a foil, not the property address. 
that was provided as I mean I provided as much mm -hmm. information I'm not trying yeah. to shut everything down I'm just yeah. being forthcoming with all the effort mm -hmm. I put into trying yeah. to find but at the tax map if you went down there the tax map could do a search on it could tell you if the name has changed on the yeah. street mm -hmm. yeah was, yeah, was I mean the certificate of occupancy listed as the same street um, and that goes back to 1950 um, then the well the certificate of occupancy I apologize that goes to 1972 the ownership of Oliver and, and when the subdivision it's still listed as the same address so I don't see and tax map number I don't know where it would have changed but I was also my way of thinking was that maybe it was, maybe there was something that existed. Either way, we really just need to know what we can do for this property owner or what the board is allowed to suggest for us, what recommendations you have, because this is their home. They've been unable to live there. Um, it's in disrepair now, the boardwalk. I provided, you know, pictures. I don't know if you call it. It's pretty, it needs a lot of work. With and I just really, they're very willing to comply, and they always have been if you look at the history. It's just that it's been so confusing, and even in a monetary manner, it's been a hardship. I mean, this is a young family that started out, had a child, you know, tried to make this their family home, and have had nothing but denials along the way. Um, they did purchase this property, if you look at the aerial photos, with this stuff in place. And from my opinion, that's an opinion, it's not a fact, but yeah. just from my looking at everything, um, things may have been adjusted along the way. That could be because they're naive yeah. and maybe yeah. they did do a little updating on yeah, they it. Should so. got a, um, yeah. They should have got a, this float is not, not old. No, the float is actually, I, yeah. I agree. I was trying the float, to figure out the float mm -hmm. is good. I yeah, would say what? within five years yeah. because they, yeah, it's, a, it's all the plastic pontoons and, yeah. and right. they just started to use them in the last five exactly. years. But I think I see a request what, lost, I think I know there was a request yeah. for that. So I'm just actually see the pontoon plastic, so it's not trying to figure out where they could go from here in a positive direction so they get back into their house. Because once we're done here, oh. we have to go to conservation. Yeah. You know, this is their house is in complete disrepair right, so because they don't you know. do work. Yeah, I, I get it. And they're not yeah. looking to do anything major other than back in the day. This was like a solarit, like oh, a, tr a glass. I don't know if you call that like a solar. I remember this house specifically. Glass that covered this area here, and the glass had like so broken nice. apart, and the homeowner took it off, and that's I think where all this started. Uh, and so now it's just been open to the elements they've closed it up as best they can now and they can't even touch this is the, this is why now when people are purchasing you know the homes if they want certificates of occupancy yeah. certificates of compliance for everything because you purchase you know Completely all agreed. right yeah i'm reading they got twenty five hundred dollar fine from the state the ec back yes. in prior to 2007 whatever it was yeah. For substantial reconstruction of, of a bulkhead without the oh. benefit of a permit, which it was probably no permit in the last time. No, was so well, but yeah. it, it's it's kind of hard that someone put a bulkhead and none of, no one none of the neighbors complained. Usually, no. So it's hard to say that it must be a permit for it somewhere. I would think. I had so much trouble finding, uh, and I not necessarily. Yeah. What I looked into. Because they well, did it at a time when no one's around and yeah. no one's well, looking. Well, unless they I'm in that neighborhood. I live there now currently, 15 Cove Road. Right. And, um, I mean, to be honest with you, I walk my dog all the time. There's but, no way there's anything going on in the Cove that nobody well, knows about. That's yeah. really the I, I well. think now people are a lot more sensitive. There's a lot more people you know, here now. You're talking... You know, Overhead shot, like 20 years ago. Quite some time ago, I mean. Yeah, because we went in. round and around about this dock over here. I mean, aerial photos yeah. help me Which greatly because really? I can't do. That <coughs> Isn't this the dock that we had an issue with? Yes. With Fred. Yes. And this property was mentioned. Yes. During those minutes, because we could, it was trouble. Guy, because the guy was complaining about him turning around. Yes. Or was it could have been a neighbor on the other side. Uh, is now is there a new bulk or a new dock right on the adjoining property to the east? Yes. Too? 
Yeah. Yeah. The, yes. Yeah. There's three with three docks in a row. Yeah, it's pretty new because I remember. Here. I think Fred was here when we were doing this work. Yeah, there was an uh -huh. issue. Well, there was issues here. We, we got a lot of work to do on this. Um, the only thing my thought would be is if the well the bulkhead is how old is, is that? pretty new, but the original the bulkhead. Twenty twenty one. Can you go back a couple of years? Yeah, two thousand one. Can you zoom in on that? Or? There's no float there. That's as far as I can go. As far as you can go. Yeah. yeah. I need, so that, I need better glasses. A floating dock and a float. I don't know what that is. It's a ramp and a bulkhead. Yeah. And no buffer. Yeah. And so the buffer was, and after that, the retaining wall was put in. And questionable materials, perhaps underneath the. Can you go a couple of years space? after that? Before or after? Uh, after that. I want to see when the float came showed up. Eighty-four. It's eighty-four. There's a float there. That's 2008. Okay. And the float is, looks like now the float's moved over. Well, because that's a total violation of our yeah. regulations. So, see what we're at now. So, between 2000, can you go to 2007? Can you go to when you bought, bought it? 2008. Possibly? No, 2004. Okay, there's no float. So between 2004 and 2008, the float. And what year did he buy it? 2005. He purchased it in 2005. So he put the float in. Okay. Because there's, there's 2004 right there, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's no float. And he didn't come for a permit. He didn't come for a permit. I feel like he did. That's what he's saying he did, but I feel yeah. like you guys, I, I don't. It, it would no be in our, yeah. I mean, yeah. No I could check, double check with Stephanie to check the minutes. Uh, but she, she does is really a pretty good job dumb. on yeah. finding yeah. anything. You guys um, gave a so. denial. It was like a one page, I think. So it was like this. Well, it so was we, no records were found. But I don't have any record of it. Like, it's, I don't if know. It's if it's a that's denial, it should fun. be a folder in there with a denial on it. No, no, no. She's saying the, the foil came up as a denial. Right, right. right. and then but no one could find could, any There was paperwork. nothing found. That's what she said. Yeah. Not a when, denial. When I worked what, with them. What year was this in? This is between 2005 and 2008. 2000. I remember this being an issue with, with Fred, this whole doc. Yeah, that, this, this and part, that was this that part. was like there, in two thousand ten. There's there's, mini, so, there's um, there minute minutes. notes of this application. Yeah. Okay, because, so we need because of the property on Robbins Lane and that dock. Because of the, the way that the way the the areas come configured, up and it's, like a, it's like it's like it's a cup. Yeah, so and, do, and it's everything is tight. This, and we're yeah. worried yeah. about yeah. The guys turning around. Yes, yes. I have a copy of the survey if you want to see that. A little small, but you guys, I gave the original survey when I turned in my application, so I only printed myself a small one. But you're welcome to view it. And I'm pretty know. sure that Ted, I mean Ted, Fred checked if that guy had a permit. Yes, he was very thorough about that. Yeah, I remember there being issues on this. So if, if, it's pressure. and it's not if, so saying that there was nothing for the float or whatever we determine, how does one go about, like, let's, you know, what do you advise, what can we do, what well, can the homeowner do? You want to legalize what's there right now. Correct. Correct. And I mean, I don't know what that report from the DEC means to you guys, because I just heard the prior case about the state versus the, you know, jurisdiction with the Board of Trust. Yeah, I don't know if the jurisdiction would be the right wording, but, um, you know, like, they said leave everything. So. How many penalties should this gentleman pay, and how many, you know, I'm sorry? Well, or it's, what it's is bigger than that, though. It's, it's bigger than that. It's better it's, for we, the we, you know, it, it, the prior conversations that you, you heard were relative to consistency in policy. Right. Okay. So, okay. so, what is that? This is what was received. So, application that's denied it there, that's 2007. Correct. But that's the only paperwork to that. Right. So, we, I don't even know what it was. But so we can look that up in the minutes. There would be minutes and discussion yeah. why right, we so denied it or approved yeah. the permit. We, okay. So we, you, you go down to the minutes. Mm -hmm. 
so of this application when it was discussed. Okay. Yes, she did. Now, would it be included in a FOIL that I did or no? It might no. not be. Well, okay. Did you ask specifically for minutes? I asked for she, everything whatever's po possible. You have to ask for the minutes. My error. I mean, yeah. I the the minutes are online, so yeah. okay. she might have not provided the minutes because they're accessible yeah. online. It, it, it would, yeah. the, the termination was at that meeting. Mm -hmm. Prior meetings, there would be discussions of it back and forth like we're doing now no. to figure yeah. out if yeah. it was doable and the consultant or the homeowner would bring in information and we would work our way through it and make a determination with the information <coughs> provided. Okay. And that so will tell you exactly what they were asking for back in 2007. Okay. All right. You can it, go, you know, once you find that online. It'll give know. you a roadmap yeah. from at least 2007 to current. And okay. Then, then, then you can get a hold of us and, and maybe we can look more as if there was a permit. You, okay. You I can mean, go oh, to uh, Southampton Town. No, I mean, and you have a permit before okay. that for Dot something gov. else on the property. For go the to okay. agendas yeah. and minutes. Okay. Go to, you get, they'll see a drop down. You want to put in the trustees. Okay. And then it, it'll give you all the dates you need. Hold on, I think Jess might have sent the minutes. Okay. Um, I mean, Jess I went with what the paper listed okay. as denial. She's good. Hi, Jessica, thank you. You send them to you, James? Yeah. Now, years <laughs> ago, the 40s and 50s, some of these applications were in the name of dock builders <coughs> oh. for yep. you got it? I got the it. applicant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that this, this was the way, but I mean, I know in Hampton Bay, yeah. some of the dock Can builders would actually mm -hmm. apply to the Board of Trustees in the name of the property owner and it would be the permits would be in their name okay all right so this is david hold it this is no. legalized and i can't really read so can you say so this is up? mr silverstein Correct. it says but you uh, wanted to re legalize it then yeah. Yeah. without permits recently constructed walkway floating dock recently yes. treated all lower work, all work done without permits so some part of that was denied some part of what you're looking at there was yeah. already denied okay i guess the walkway and the float i can't quite read it safe trustee the bulk trustee it. havmeyer brought up the application of david silverstein 49 mm -hmm. waters edge road north sea off fish cove mr silverstein would like to legalize recently refaced 60 feet of bulkhead legally recently yes. reconstructed four by five four point five by sixty foot walkway legalized recently installed two point five by twelve foot ramp and six by twenty floating dock secured by two four inch posts all this work was done without applying for permits aerial photographs ranging from 1976 to 2004 do not show any evidence of these structures. All structures were recently constructed and installed with treated lumber. The dilapidated ramp and float were probably brought in from somewhere else. Trustee Havemeyer recommended that his application be denied as all structures were constructed with treated lumber and there were no structures previously on the site. Trustee Havmeyer recommended all tr all structures be removed from Trustee Waters, and he will notify Justice Court. Trustee Warner recommended that Mr. Silverstein submit a plan for the safe removal of the bulkhead. Trustee Havmeyer recommended the applicant do a soft solution for the shoreline yeah. instead of a bulkhead. I wonder what happened in Justice Court. Yes, we have to go find out what happened, Justice Court. Okay. See so why so, so we they never. Went through this. Okay. So then, Justice Court to find out what happened at Justice Court. Right. Would be can you can you scroll down a little bit? Go down walking? just a. I think that's. That's it. It, it sounds like that's a sensible um, solution was offered by Justice Warner and Adam yeah. yeah. Warner Senior. And that was that was me. That was you. What, what year was it? Two thousand. Seven. 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 That was me. I was I was only six on the board. That was very sensible. Okay, so then it's yes. you. Yeah. Yes. 
I told you I remember. Yeah, yeah. he remembered. <laughs> okay, so, so, good. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, next step? Yeah. Well, to go next step. To well, let's see, ask our council. Let's go, J Joe, can you stick? Well, you got Mark's here too. I mean, yeah, Mark, we got, yeah. we got, got Mark, here. I got Joe. Yeah, yeah. I got Joe, I got we're, Mark. Let's see what, we, which one says that we don't want a 65 clip. You're shopping. You're shopping. Okay. You're shopping. <laughs> Just says you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> 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 thank you. Tell day, uh, she, she had it. I was trying to get it, and she's like, James goes, it's up. She's got thank it. She's, she's, like, she's, like she's watching. Yes. Thank, you. <laughs> thank goodness, Jess. Thank she's you, not. Jess. And sorry we and, didn't say thank you straight Feldman away. Too. I baby did. Feldman. No, no, baby Feldman what yet. What, what do you, do you think? Think? What's the next step for us? Well, they're attempting to legalize. Uh, Which was denied back right. in. And Mr. Silverstein is the person that's currently also making the application. That's who I'm here representing. All right, so in other words, he knew and he didn't do anything about it. Now he's yeah. back. So I would say that Trustee Habermeyer's proposed solution to the extent that it's still applicable is the sensible way to go because we don't allow treated lumber. It's got to come out. Yeah. Right. And there's appropriate penalty for the legalization, and he's going to have to replace everything that he takes out if he wants to restore the status quo as much as possible. With perhaps the soft and solution that was recommended? But he, that would certainly be something that should be looked at, I would think. Yeah. But he's going to need some guidance on this project because there's a material that's been placed behind the bulkhead which elevates the property. Yeah. And there's it's going to We may need some core samples or something from that, that yeah. background. Because so we don't want the same a, thing there's to a, happen. There's, in, a, um, there's a distinct like elevation traffic. change. Yeah. From I mean, the house down to the bulkhead. Or from the bulkhead to the wetlands are yeah. in front of it too. It's it, it's a substantial because we don't want to cover the, we don't want to cover the wet wetlands with sand. Yeah, right. and we don't want the same problem we had down with someone we moved the bulkhead with the town's permission without our permission down in Psych Harbor. And there yeah. also there also are no other bulkheads on any adjoining structures. You might go have to recreate a wetland there and some. Some um, well, those sure bio lines might be, might be yeah exactly think, something like this. I think probably that you're going to need quite a lot of help with this. Yeah, you might you have to hire like someone like help. a consultant from who can draw out. Uh, yeah, design, 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 design plan. You may want to get somebody yeah. that's got a little expertise in engineering, in, in legalizing yeah. sure. structures, but okay. also engineering because removal of the yeah. bulkhead is tricky. Yeah. And the hydrodynamics of this little cove. Yeah. Because you know, to not, I mean. Because if, if he, has six, he has six feet now, but he might end up with negative six inches, you know. You're going to need bathymetry, like the depth of the water, so that sure. none of the sediment. Uh, this, this is going to be a, a, a rather lengthy and detailed application you're going to have to make it. It's gonna, yeah, you're going to have to. The board, there's going to be a lot of board input on this. Yeah, you're going to have to okay. do some research on who. You're gonna, you know, help. if you can't handle it, who's gonna help you? Oh, I won't be able to. Right, handle so you're gonna, gonna have to get no, someone to design no. what needs to be done here. They're all like in the back, How? like smiling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> has, has, has this has this been done before, where a bulkhead has been requested to be removed? And do you know what the steps like? Is there? This I think this is. I can't remember any others where we had to actually physically remove it, unless it was made into a um, low sill bulkhead. Low sill bulkhead. Where, where, where you remove the current bulkhead, yeah. but there would be a bulkhead that would be low sill, this which, might, which would allow the yeah. wetlands and the bank behind yeah. it to be stabilized. This might be a good... Low, would do it with plastic or low sill bulkhead, it might in steps. Yeah. Prevent this. You're going to need to consult with someone. Yeah. Yeah. Someone has to design this. Yeah, exactly. that, that's really, we, we, we shouldn't be speculating we, on yeah. it now. Because if you do a low cell bulk cut, then you can, you can make wetlands behind each bulk cut. There, there may be options, but yeah. again, somebody that's 
a little better versed in this will be oh, the yeah. best guidance yeah. that you can get That's on this. But, okay. but that, that answers your questions. I yeah. think you've made great yeah. progress here today yes. to see what's occurred. And for this okay. board to ma maintain consistency in policy, the, the direction that we're going to go is pretty much set now. Yeah, he knew, he okay. knew your answer before you even came in. Oh, yeah, Mr. Okay. Sandler, because he got right. denied. So I do appreciate your time and that. And yeah. Yep. I will look further for Thank you. better expertise on this. Thank yeah. you. In all reality, yeah. research. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica saved yeah. us a yeah. tremendous yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. You got to get this credit one where credit is clear. Put this one on hold. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Okay, Thank good luck. Thank we'll, you. We'll be seeing this. Uh, yeah, you may not be at, seeing me, but you'll be at, seeing this. At some yeah. point in time, we'll be seeing this for proper uh, disposition. Thank you. Hey, Thank Bill. You. I'll print this out. But she sent right. me and put it in that box. Okay. okay. So you, you now have... Um, Peconic Restaurant Marina, 1109 Noyak Road, J-O-M environment. Come on. Glenn Just. How are you, sir? Very good. Happy first day of spring. Yes. A little chilly. Tomorrow's the first day of spring. Yeah. I thought today. 5.42 today. It, 5.42 p.m. today. Oh, oh today? It was a little too chilly this morning, so we can get a do-over on that. We can get a do-over tomorrow. There's no snow to show us, Scott, so. <laughs> That's true. That's because I put the uh, bucket on the front of the tractor. That's why there was no snow. <laughs> That's what all my neighbors said. Now that you did that, it's not going to snow. I said, so okay, keep I'm it on until June. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to go with that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so they're in for a 10 year dredging permit. Great. You have the floor. Pardon? You have the floor. So we're requesting a 10 year dredging permit for Peconic Marina for two separate sections. <coughs> we, we don't offer those, do we? No, we don't. We, we could no. do like five. Yeah. We do a permit one in one year one. for renewals after. Yes. Okay. That's the way it works. Okay, fine. We have we're, we're granted tenure by the DEC. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. Uh, there's two sections I'd like to uh, dredge. The first one being is uh, a 3,008 square foot area. Uh, it'd be dredged as six foot Mimo, at Meanwhile Water with 81 cubic yards of spoil to be removed. The second section. Uh, is a 1,818-foot square foot area, dredges to four feet below the low water, 61, uh, 61 cubic yards of uh, material to be removed. Uh, the plan is to store the material on site, uh, so it be watered and then trucked off site to a uh, sand mine up the uh, 110. I don't recall the name of the, of the facility where it's going, but it's deemed uh, dirty by the DEC. It has uh, There's some kind of contaminant. Contaminants. That's why we want to try it and then, uh, take it off the island. For this okay. Place. So it's to be taken off the site. Okay. Yeah, here's a um, survey. Yeah. This is a survey, right? That's the survey. This is the plan. Yeah. Okay. And this black line right here is the is the line, survey line. Is what now? Is that the survey line? Correct. Black line. Mm -hmm. Their property comes up to here. Right. Okay. This is all us the trustees. Then okay. this float has no permit. Okay. So this float has to be bring back. Has to be what? Brought back. It's not. It's not on their property because as this. The survey is right up to here. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, I'm really. Let me see. Here's a here's an up to date one. It was stamped a little while ago. So it's sort of the same thing. So to Ian, you want to see it too, Bill? Yes, please. Yeah. Can you can you zoom out zoom in on that? On this part? Yeah. About this one. one. Down farther. This side? Where one of the corners of it in there right there, where the edge of the property stops, but on the surface. I guess what he's saying is this is 
Oh, this is a float here, yeah. Yeah. But is there a permit for any of this, Billy? No. It, all of this is not permitted? No, it's not permitted. That uh, floats it. Where's the float? Right in the corner? Yeah. It, and it, it goes... It goes... It crosses the line? Yeah. It crosses the line. Oh, I see. I, okay. So part of that bulkhead is trusty? Yes. Yes. I remember, Ed, Ed yes. you were telling me stories about your father when he was down here on this same problem. Yes, there was boats stored on our property. Yeah. That um, what I would ask is for uh, the, the uh, marina to have stakes put there, S actually stake it out and delineate it so we can all go down and look at this. Okay. I know this has been a contentious issue for years, yes. ever since I was on the board and many years prior this yes. whole area. So, you know, I would like to, you know, I think the board would like to, to see have it to clean up yeah. and clean up the property line boundaries that are currently there so that we once and all, once and for all can put this to rest. Yes, because if so the future trustees won't have the same problem what we have. Yeah. Um, and as far as the dredging of the the dredging part of it, mm -hmm. um, you want to see it? Yeah, I really. Yeah. I, I know we have had. You got trouble with the one neighbor then. No, we had. No, been multiple questions here as far as yeah. dredging and. Uh, I mean, this is a... Uh, you have to be careful of these people over here. Yep. This, stuff comes, this stuff comes in here, so this has to be protected, protected so this doesn't keep on falling in from here. Okay. But this does, I agree, this does need to be dredged. Okay. Okay, so here's your issue. Here's your issue right, right. here, yeah. yeah. So this, this needs to be dredged, but we got an issue here. Yes. Yeah. And then we got area to be dredged right here. Right here. Yeah, now that, now I know historically when we, because I was first on the board when we did this uh, bulkhead Broken. project and we did the return and we only went so far to the east because once you get east of that, there's uh, a lot of wetlands. Wetlands and unprotected waterfront. There's no bulkhead. Right. And dredging this at, at a steep slope and, and the it, roadway, it, it's, it it's yeah, only it, about. 15 feet between the wetlands and the roadway, and it's an elevation very, very steep. We felt that it was going to literally just slough into the. Okay. Uh, Where's the cross section of the dredging? Where's the on the second pitch? Next page over. Yeah, I mean this. This is a. It's got to be the proper, otherwise it's going to do exactly going to do. Uh, and this is. And the trouble. You see that dock should have been where the dock was permitted years ago, it's too close. So when the, the bigger boats go in there now, it, the prop wash knocks it down. So this is stretch area BB. Yeah, we got we to find the one for the area that was the wetland. All right, this is A. -A. B. No, it's a B. B. No, B. 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 One is what you're talking about. So you got to find B. B. One. B. B. One. Okay. So B. B. One is. This is B. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. The area two. Yeah, this the guy. Right there. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Charles. Dredge area one is is this. It so must be this, and this is area two. So this would be the one that we'd be looking Dredge at. Dredge area one is the one to the east near the wetland. That's letter A. So that's showing the top. You're talking about area B, right? A -B. Yeah. A is right there. But we're looking for the the, the angle B of the dredge. B B area one is what it said, right? On the uh, he has it right here. Confusing. Did it say BB Area 1? I don't know. Yeah, Dredge Area 1 right up BB on the screen. One. Yeah, he yeah. got but it. It's, it's, it's the bottom one. It's, it's this one over here. It's not. It's this one here. Yeah. BB 1? That's yeah, BB Dredge Area. Okay, BB Dredge Area 2. Yeah, yeah. 
That, that is confusing a little bit. Yeah. Mainly they just gone right up to, to the ball four. Head. But what yeah. is? Oh. Well, this is in front of the bulkhead. Yeah, right. that's the need so existing. What's this? Meet so meet existing debt. Yes. What's that, buddy? Meet, no, to meet existing existing debts. Right, is but it? what's? But they're not dredging this. They're only dredging this. Thirty-eight by fifty-nine. I'm trying to. So what? Look at the scale here. This they're, is confusing. They're only going to go to four feet here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to figure which. That's what they're saying in that area. The eastern dredging, the PV. Yeah, right that, there. They're only going to go to four feet. Correct. Yeah. Now. So they're not, not really taking. What is it now? It's minus five. Or they're going to do in front of our bulkhead. Um. And then they're going to do by the wetlands a minus two, minus one, or minus three. That's currently there. Um, if they go to minus four, there, it's really going to be. It's going to cave right in. It's going to cave right in. There's so, already so minus four along here, though. Minus three point eight. Minus yeah, but this this nine, area of shoaling is where they really. Minus three point six. Minus five point two. That's. That's A, 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 this is B, B. Yeah, this is, the, this, is, this, is B, this is it here. Because they're only going to go to minus 4. Where is it? Just look at it. No. It's, it's the bottom section, it's the one you're looking at. It's this down here. One. Yeah, yeah, six. Six. yeah, I got it. Yeah. Because this is the bigger crosshatch. Oh, this different ones? Yes. All right, yeah, okay, so they're going to minus hatch. 6. Yeah. So where's yeah. where's a minus six come in relative to the the, 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 the wet the wetland? Um, the whole the entire whole the whole area. This whole area. Our bulkhead stops right. So to the right here, right? It's at the end of the bulkhead. Yes. And then it has a return, so they're going to dredge. Out yes, and the bulkhead. The T dock. Yeah. yeah. How would they plan on dredging this with a truck barge crane? With a um, clamshell or a clamshell. The best way to look at this is have them stake it out on the water where they're going to do the dredging. Kind of have to. Yeah. And then you can go down there and actually look at it. Look at it. Because we're guessing where the where there is. There's so a shoal there. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can. You, you, you have yeah. the stake permit for this already? Pardon? You have the stake permit for this? Yes. Do we have it? No. Just, just since I applied, yes. since I applied with you folks, right. they've issued it in the meantime. Glenn said that it was ten-year permit. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be staked out where the proposed dredge area is going to uh, take place. Both, both areas. Well, specifically so this the, the area. Corner. The, the corner. The one along the bottom. You get a copy of that. Yeah. The, I'll the, get it for that. Yeah. The BB. This is B, the, well, it says AA and BB, B. so it's the AA or B1 on. So it'd be section dredge area number two, is what you're saying. So yeah, it's the one with the larger uh, square hatch. Got you. Hatch. Now, you said other, Ed, you said about staking in the other area uh, where the float dock goes over the property line. You want the yeah. property line staked down, and that's where you want yeah. to see yes. the property, property line. line. Yeah, I want, and I want what needs yeah. to be cleaned up. Yes. Yeah. Make sure it once is on their property, is on their property, not the not the freeholders' property. Okay. Yes. All right. And if you could do both at the same time, then me and Ed will going to have yeah. to take a look yes. at it. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. I have a really uh, a concern about the dredging here and how it's going to influence the wetlands and the roadway is right above it. Right. Yeah. So, and I know when. We would when I when the trustees were doing the project, I met with the uh, contractor multiple times down there. They did some dredging and some backfilling, and we were very cognizant of not dredging in front of the wetlands because it was going to cause issues with it. Yeah, cave in. Yes. Yeah, you got to get the grade. Plus, you got to get that. You know, we get correct, otherwise you're going to compromise. You don't want to do that. Yeah, we actually put a return there. And, 
it, it, was, it became a very complicated uh, project. Okay. I want to realize the prior issues. You know, the first, so, first project. So, so for we're going to hold this. This is getting yeah, held so pending it being yeah. state yeah. resolving yeah. some of this, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you. Is, Thanks, there a, Glenn. is there a window on that permit you have from the state? Yeah. Okay. What is that one? I don't recall. I'd have to give it because it seems to be different. But each one is one's a window I got flounder, you. one's a. All right. Well, let's look at that. Top. I got yeah. you. Let's get a we'll copy for us to look at. Shellfish spawning. So it's probably December first until about the end of January. Or yeah. Something. We'll, we'll look like at that. it. That's, that's and thank you for putting us on the agenda, Bill. Uh, this is something yeah. I want to address because of the window coming up. Right. right. So we let's realize that. Yes, yeah. I realize. Plus, Send it's boating season. Shall do. All right. Thank you. Thank you, folks. All right. So that's on hold pending. One ninety one Shore Road. Patrick oh, Pina. Yes. Pena. Yes. Have a seat. Good morning, Mr. Pena. Hello. Hello. How are you? Replace in place one hundred fifty feet of linen, linen feet of existing timber bulkhead. Did you sign in? Had includes a seven foot return on the southwest side of the boat basin and eight foot groin under catwalk with navy style vinyl green hot topical lumber. Dredge approximately 20 yards of sand from the bottom of existing of the 18 by 16 boat basin. Extend a catwalk 27 feet over the existing eight foot, eight foot groin to access a proposed floating dock. I think the trouble we had was um, the bulkhead we, was no problem, but the existing, the, the proposed um, float. Can you bring the plans up? Yeah. Uh, what are you modifying specifically? It doesn't say on the... Uh, okay. The, uh, well, it, it's basically all done. We had everything was approved. Uh, we had gone through that. This is an actual overlay of the old survey versus the new survey because when the inspector came to do the measurements and check everything out he had a few concerns so yes. that's what we're really addressing today so the concerns were that the uh that was a hundred and it was put in as 122 linear feet of bulkhead to be replaced yeah. and if you measure from the corner of uh, my neighbor's property and to the end of the boat so it actually works out to like 100 linear feet so the uh, 22 linear feet is under, uh, at high tide, it's underneath. You have the eight foot groin, and you also have the return for that uh, adjacent wall of the, the slip. So those two sections, I'm assuming the inspector didn't see. It leaves us with a seven foot that, uh, to be honest with you, I think it's just, uh, you know, when they, the contractors came and gave me the linear footage, I think yeah. they might have left themselves a little leeway in all the right. state. Uh, so that's why I, I showed you the old survey and the new survey, which shows the overlay that they, were, they did a pretty good job uh, replacing in place. Okay. It's, it's, uh, you can see that one wall was leaning in. I don't know if you zoom in on that, that left side of the slip there. Uh, obviously the new material is much wider than the old material. Uh, I mean, they even have it from the corner. You see how the old bulkhead is actually uh, that's the narrower lines there that you see. Yeah. Uh, laid into the new bulkhead. It's, yeah, it's one's a corrugated so plastic and the other exactly. one's a regular right. so right. so showing in and out. So survey over survey, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Because I was a little nervous too. You know, yeah. we can only uh, trust the contractors uh, so at much. this point, right? Exactly. So when I first heard it, I was like, well, maybe I got ripped off. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. I just well, I was wondering if. Uh, so there, there was three concerns, I guess. So I just changed the linear feet. Uh, that was the modification there. Okay. The other thing was uh, we the the big problem that we had uh, with the DEC kept pushing the float out because they wanted it in deeper water, but we didn't want the the uh, catwalk out any further than it needed to be because it's a pinch point right across from Conscience Point. Yes, yes. So we got that approved at 28 feet. 
uh, when the contractors were there doing the job, they put the float where the DEC required it, and then they pushed the catwalk out, and it, it ended up only needing to be at about 27 feet. So uh, I don't know if that also has to do with the measurements where you take them from, whether inside the corrugated or outside, you know, <laughs> the line of above, the new bulkhead. Uh, but that's the, one of the problems the inspector had, was that it was actually uh, put in at 28 feet for the permits, and it, he, it only goes out about 27, yet the float is where it needs to be. Yeah. So I just adjusted that. Okay, well. so you moved Modified. it back in. Yeah, we were able to just go out as little as possible. The plans yeah. were approved at 28, but we went with 27 because okay. it could fit. So we put okay. in a modification for that. Okay. So this is correcting the permit for language pursuant exactly. to the what we inspectors. Had. George's inspector. Report. Yes. Yes. So, you, okay. With no, what's everything it? being less than. A little bit. We're yeah, pretty darn close. Yeah, right. just trying to, and actually, I guess in the favor of what we wanted to achieve, so that right. was good. We didn't have to extend further. What, what else has changed here? There was uh, one other point. I, I'm forgetting it off the top of my head. I apologize. Yeah, I think you might have it there. Oh, the, uh, I think the, the basin width, there it is. Uh, 20 by 18, again, I think that's just change in material where they might have measured from. As I went back to the engineer and the surveyor on that. So it's 18 by 16 now. Yeah. So you're just correcting then, that. Yeah, correcting that. and that's okay. where the overlay came in like that. Right, so you've done what we've asked you to do. Yeah, did everything. Yeah, because so. of the corrugated <laughs> right. material yeah. takes up takes a lot more right. area. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is all resolved? Yes. Yeah, yeah just needed to. Let's get to the okay. next step here. Yeah. Next step. You good with that, Trustee? I'm fine with it. All right, so that, that can advance. We're that. all fine. Let's advance it. Does it okay. need stamp plans, Billy, or is it we going to approve it as part um, of the other plans? Do we have stamp plans? Yeah. Well, the originals. No, because it's before. The originals were stamped. No. Yeah. They're okay? Yeah, well, it's just ad adjusting the measurements just to adjusting. more comply with what is yeah. going on, okay. there, but they were stamped by the engineer. Our second okay. council said it's okay. All right. Well, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. All right. We're, we'll just we'll move this forward. You have stamped. Thank plans. you for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Have a nice day. Thank you. <laughs> now, the next one that we have here is... You already did. You already did. I'm done. Yep. So we've got you, Trustee Warner. Yeah. Theodore Calissus, 53 Far Pond, Shinnecock Hills. Okay, I know that she, Stephanie had texted me. She was trying to get in on Zoom, but I explained to Stephanie that we don't do Zoom at work sessions. Okay. So I don't know. I didn't get anything back. I don't know whether she's on her way here or she's not in the area. So well, you might. She was told it would be tabled if she didn't show up. Okay, I mean, James, you and I went over this. We've had correspondence, or, or Nick and our office have had several correspondence back and forth with the applicant. Um, have they have Fold changed the uh, original you know, uh, application yeah. to, Folders. instead of uh, in front of the uh, 18 inches in front, that they're going to do in kind and in place. Um, Give me extra work. So I don't know. If you, do you, yeah. Should we hold it, James, and wait for her to come, or do you want to go through it? Um, it's it's up to you. I mean, if you feel comfortable with it. Well, I mean, Could you zoom in just a little bit. Oh, it's bit. down for the bottom. For this, sorry. Yeah, I mean, the bulkhead applications in kind and in place, which we had asked for, which and it's and we're going to ask for all the work to be done landward of the uh, project so it doesn't interfere with the wetlands that are currently there. Uh, three quarters of the, or well, more than half the property is vegetated in front of it. Uh, put up a, uh, you know, silt fencing, whatever, so that there's no uh, siltation that could fall onto the wetlands. Um, the only one other question I have is the application for the uh, floating dock. It's only, only two point, two point, yeah, I'm trying to, the depth of it is not adequate for our regulations. It's not 30 inches, it's 2.29. Uh, so the only thing I would, I would like to recommend to chalk the dock 
Um, and, and we would need a plan showing that and state that on the uh, cover sheet. And other than that, I think the application would be approvable because there's no submerged aquatic vegetation in this uh, creek here. You have to move the poles so you can put the chalks on the course. Yes, you want, well, I want to see the plans for the chalk. Okay. So. Um, so we could request that then of the applicant? Yep. Yes, we would request plans showing how they would uh, do the chalking of the dock so that it wouldn't go any lower than uh, 30 inches. And other than that, I think it's... Uh, Approval? Yeah, I think so. Stamp plans and then we'll be good. Okay. All right? So Stamp plans, send. cover sheet. Yep. The chalk chalks. Yep. Okay. So and, and it shows uh, the upland part of it. Um, uh, I'd like to see a, a, a schematic of what they're going to do behind the bulkhead as far yes. as... The, it says beach 10 grass. foot yeah, yeah, will yeah. be filled with <coughs> beach grass. Yeah, all right. So I guess it's it, on. It's, it's on. I think a cross hatching. It's it's on yeah. I oh, can't. It's, just really it's really really small. Yeah. Oh yeah. God. All right. That's why. It's, sorry. Oh God. I need my yeah, magnifier. I was having trouble <laughs> with bigger stuff. The cover sheet wow. states that yes, it, that was <laughs> need more carrots. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have enough carrots at home for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty. pretty more small. carrots. Please. So, so Pete, some so more carrots. Does that sound adequate, James? Yep. Okay, all right, so we'll hold it until we receive that. You want to hold it? Well, I mean, we're going to put it off until next, until we receive the, uh, the plan updated plan. version. Okay? Yep. Okay. So are we holding or? We're going to, the P. P plans. Yep. Uh, the next application we have is Canal Properties LLC, One North Road, Hampton Bays, Nelson Pope, and Voorhees. Nelson Pope and Voorhees on behalf of the applicant. Um, this one is, you know, as they come, a fairly straightforward one, I like to think. Um, we are asking for a permit to do some maintenance dredging of the boat basin that is associated with the boathouse project on the east side of the Shinnecock Canal, just north of the Shinnecock Bridge. I'm sorry, the bridge that goes over the canal. Um, this, do you have a, a what do you want to around? Yeah. So people know it, exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. I'll hold it up while we're waiting for James. So yep. the boat basin is a single and separate parcel now. It's the old chart house. What's that? The old. What this is the old. Shinnecock Quay. Uh, Shinnecock Quay. Yes. Yeah, way back when. Yes. Yeah. So I, yeah I, I know it is. It was too, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. Good burgers. Um, muffins. <laughs> so again, the. There's been some shoaling that has occurred in this basin as a result of um, some uh, failure to old bulkheads, evidently. And um, you can really see if, you, know, you, you can see that shoaling right there where James has the cursor. Yeah. That's the primary point of concern. And then there's some shoaling around <laughs> the bulkheading. Um, you can see there's bulkheading all along the east side of the canal. Um, it turns slightly to the north where you have the train trestle. That's what, that's what you see right to the north of the boat basin. Um, you have a slightly naturalized shoreline. However, um, there is some buried uh, rocks that are sort of adjacent to that, that concrete wall. Yep, right about in there. So the idea is to, um, you know, to the points that the trustees were just making about slumping is to be very careful as we approach yeah. those naturalized shorelines, so we will maintain a natural uh, angle of repose because nobody wants any uh, failure there. But as we work along the bulkhead where the slips are and then the south side of the basin, again, we were just looking to dredge to five feet to, to maintain that. That bulkhead's pretty new in there, right? Yeah, that bulkhead was replaced based upon a trustee's permit uh, just recently, yeah, to, my, to my understanding. Our office didn't process that permit, nor were we involved it's in the work. It's a tough spot to get in and out of when the locks yeah. open. Yeah. And the bulkhead that's between the canal and the property, uh, the steel bulkhead was replaced too. That was where the erosion and all the material was coming because 
that old steel bulkhead had holes in it and with the That's wave right. action and current really changed the uh, inside character of that you know, uh, basin, but since they've done that, uh, that's many years ago. So yeah, you, they see that, that photo that right there. Was it eight, ten years ago? No, it's way more than breakwater. Water, 20 years water. ago. No, yeah. no, when they replaced it. The By steel current. bulkhead? Yeah. I wasn't on the board then. No. No. It was just that was replaced a little while ago. The one on the inside, on the east side, yeah. was replaced. So there has been, I mean, to that point, there has been some work done to make sure that that marina is operational. Yep. And again, I think right now the last piece is just to make sure we get that shoaling taken care of. There's a couple of really deep holes in that basin, but and, you know, so for the most part, it's navigable. Um, the area that we're looking to dredge is approximately 8,700 square feet. It seems like a lot, but it's really just linear along the bulkheads. Yeah. Um, James, can you pull up the plans? Where's the material going? It's all going off site. And to a licensed facility. So it will be put onto the barge? Yeah, then? this all has to be done by a barge. You know, there, for those of you who are familiar, there's a, an embankment along. Um, really steep. It's pretty steep in yep. here. It's mm -hmm. now revegetated based upon, you know, processing of proper permits, you know. Um, so it is stabilized. And, and the idea is that all the work will be done from a barge. And if you actually looked at the 2021 or 2020 aerials, you'll see the barge sitting in there from the previous bulkhead that was just mm -hmm. recently reinstalled. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we know we can get a barge in here. We know the work can be done by a barge. So the material will be taken by a barge um, to an offsite facility. Where, where is the offload offloading site? To be determined. Okay. Uh, can you contact our office prior to the project? Uh, being started, so I can we can send our um, dock inspector. He, we would like to have him learn about the dredging process and how it goes from basically cradle to the grave. Basically, we're going to find out the end product where the end product goes. But I like to see where it's offloaded, so he can get a visual aspect on how, how this whole process is done. Okay, absolutely. It's a training course for him. Yeah, <laughs> also, make sure that it's not washed overboard. Yeah, well, that, Bill, I, I didn't say that. That's so what you were hinting. No, that, that all makes a lot of sense, yeah. and we can do that. Okay. So, uh, just to be clear, uh, the product description, I'll just read it to you. Dredge approximately 380 cubic yards of sediment to a depth of minus five feet below mean low water. Proposed dredged area is approximately 265 feet long um, and 10 to 65 feet wide, comprising approximately 8,700 square feet. Clamshell bucket from a barge mounted crane will be used, a crane excavator will be used to remove the sediment from the basin. All dredged material will be transported offsite to a licensed facility, and it is noted that. Uh, Per trustees' warner's request, we will be in contact with the trustees prior to the commencement of the work to make sure that there's an understanding about offloading sites and transportation. All right. So these slips are all assigned, right, to property owners? I don't have an answer for that. I, I don't quite know. It is a private marina. I would imagine that it does have some relationship to the condominiums, but it is a standalone property. You know, based upon the preparation approval of, of the condominium map, you know, um, this, this, the basin itself stands alone now. It's its own tax parcel. Okay. Um, should we have the application switched over to that parcel since the dredging will be on that location? It should be. No, it's under one north one, road. One north. It, the application I read into the minutes was this, one north. This boat basin doesn't have an it's, address. Yeah, that's, it has that's, a tax map. that's why we had to put an address to it. Five north. It's it's five. It's not one, right? It, it, well, it's it, a different that, tax map number, though. But the tax map number we submitted should have been the tax map number on record for that basin. Can you click on that, James? The basin? Hmm. What, is, what is that tax number? 2425. Yeah, that's what we submitted. Okay. So, so maybe, 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 maybe so when it was added, it was put in wrong. So 
Yeah, because I have the uh, the work session uh, agenda has it as uh, one. one north. It should be uh, read into the record. It should be five north road with the tax map of 0900 dash 207 dash 04 dash 25. Actually, we did note it as five north road. I'm looking at the application sheet yeah. right now. Yeah, but I'm looking at my agenda here. Yeah, we made we made we just wrong on our agenda. Yeah. There. So I, I'm going to amend that. Oh, so we know. So okay. Gotcha. We'll transfer everything to the correct parcel. But to that point, our application cover sheet and product description should be accurate. Yes. Yeah, it is. So I have it right in front of me. So we would ask that you advance it if, if you feel appropriate. I, I think it's good, right? I'm fine with it. All right. It's a good idea. All right. I just need to get you stamp plans, please. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, they're not stamped. Yep. I don't, I don't know if we stamped them as cement. No, they're not stamped. So yes, we got it. You good? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. All right. Good. See you later. 74 Point Meacox, uh, NTS Meacox LLC, InterScience. Mr. Walker. Mr. James Walker. This is a. Uh, hey, Jim. How's it going? Jim. This is a project that was previously discussed. This is a maintenance project. We have uh, permits from the town and permits from the state to do selective cutting. It's been a big success. Mr. Duryea has gotten pictures of our common read uh, management projects prior. What happens is the Phragmites dies. When it's underwater, especially when there's ice over the winter, especially when Mecox is high, um, the Phragmites turns black, and then it falls apart, and the rhizomes die. So really what we're asking for is a maintenance permit. Uh, we have uh, not done any work this year because we're in the process of meeting Marty Shea's uh, uh, demands, and the work would proceed for another year. It's important to do maintenance. If you don't do maintenance, you have the threat of Pragmites returning. We did a permit for the next door neighbor and the next door neighbor at 250 and 260. Um, Joe Flane. And these projects have been spectacularly successful. Okay. I urge you to go down and take a look. You don't have a picture, do you, of um, summer, sure summer shots? I don't know. So Maybe. this is a just project. Describe. If you just We're start this project. If you just describe <laughs> what, do you, what do you need? Uh, just describe how successful it's been in terms of what um, the The Phragmites is native. not growing. If you look at the photos on the board here. Uh, yeah, the color right, photos. What you see the right summer? there is marsh hibiscus. So the marsh hibiscus. And when you walk yourself back, you're going to run into a uh, high tide bush. So that's all ground soles. It's kind of lighter, almost green color. Um, but you also have uh, soft rush that comes back. You have, in the water, you have chairmaker's rush, but you also have narrow leaf cattail. And these are uh, unexpected, uh, positive uh, uh, results. We didn't expect this. The first time we did it was at 55 Ambleside, and that guy has fallen off the map. We don't see him ask for permits any longer, but. Um, um, we were pleasantly surprised when the Phragmites rhizomes turned black. And then you could go down at low water and kick them, and they would fall apart. They're, they're dead. So what comes up next is uh, narrow leaf cattail and chairmaker's rush in the water. Do you, you have get to plant them? No. No, no they come through. You can, plant, you can plant them. They're all right. wild. The state used to ask us to plant seeds down there, but yeah. the, the real fact of the matter is the root bank uh, is already, it has all the native seeds there. Yeah. So the first thing you see is some marsh hibiscus and some, some Joe Pye weed, um, but the, if you stick with it long enough, you start to see narrow leaf cattail and chairmaker's rush in the water. And the Phragmites doesn't come back unless it's coming across a property line. So then, all we're asking for is maintenance. Okay. Property owner has continued 
uh, Brant's old project here when uh, Jay Bielski owned the property. And she's done a good job. Uh, property owner is represented by Peconic, um, Bill Matters, and they've done a nice job of getting the frag monkeys out of there. And we, we have to continue with Marty Shea and that permit uh, processes right now. So we're asking for a renewal from the Conservation Board at the same time. I don't it, think there's anything else though. No, this, uh, it's a great project and part of, I mean, this whole creek now is surrounded like the whole periphery of the creek is surrounded with Phragmites, which didn't used to be the case. Mm -hmm. But because of the inability or, or not dredging the entrance to that creek over time, it's less saline in there, and therefore there's a higher percentage of Phragmites. So the, this there's is a, a really so this is a really good example of. These three projects right next to each other have all worked. Mm -hmm. They've all been successful. Mm -hmm. They all have ended up with uh, native plants. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. At somebody's expense. Uh, each one of these projects is very difficult in terms of dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. But if you have a property owner that's committed to the projects, they seem to be uh, reliable and highly successful. Is there a point at which the natives come back and completely there, there are always will, uh, will be some kind of um, maintenance, maintenance necessary always always okay and if they stop well the problem is that five years goes by and then they spend more money trying to get the frags back out so selective cutting is easy to do it's kind of inexpensive the longer you do it the less costly it is and we've had a huge range of uh, factors. Uh, it depends on the salinity and how much uh, fresh water input. At this part of uh, Swan Creek, it's directly across from the farms. Um, the farmers are probably not going to come in for common remanagement. But the encouraging thing is where the property was successful, the next guy did it. Then the next guy did it, and they all call our office and ask for uh, common read management um, permits. And generally, we've had big success with this approach. This is Marty Shea's approach. This is Environment Division um, criteria protocol used. Because of our uh, work with the uh, CPF funding, we had managed to make the long channel happen in Mecox after many years of fighting with the DEC for a permit. So now that the salinity has gone from six and seven up to 24, 24 25, this the whole character of the perimeter of the shoreline of Mecox could change with a higher salinity. O only took six years to get that permit. Six years for a five year permit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't go there, but you should. Six six for five. Five. You should have applied six years ago for yeah, six, a, a new one. Yeah, six I know. for a five. But the uh, the fact that the trustees got the uh, big dredging project done to need the biolog installation at 1030, possible. Yep. So living shorelines um, benefit from the water being low as well. Yes. It makes it easier to install them. All those projects are good. And yes, Dredging is critical. Yep. Well, I think we're good here. Yep. All right, Jim. Okay. Right, Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Good to you. I don't engineered problems. Uh, um, excuse me. I don't need engineered no. plans to selectively cut. No. 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 Okay. You're good. Thanks. Good advances, Thanks please. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Okay. So we have 21 Baycrest Avenue. Patiently waiting. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, sign in real quick. Okay. Um, this had been before your review previously. 
and the float was uh, going straight out. And that led to the landward end of the float being in shallow water. So we rotated the float accordingly to be in a T configuration. Uh, length of the dock has not changed. Um, the length of the fixed dock changed slightly to reach that, or to reach the uh, ramp to reach the float. But the overall length still is uh, 100 feet from the main high water. So we're all complying with Blue Book regulations? Yep. And it shows the float. As a child? Yes. Yep. With braces and cross braces. Okay, so you've done. With the four poles. Yep. Yes. James? Yep. It's done what we needed to be done. It's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thirty-nine Jessup. Last but not least. Bernard S. Hodes. Shoreline bulkheading. I think this one I, On, I spoke yeah. to James about. This they uh, had permits for doing the work and they did less work. They um, got a permit for a redo of a bulkhead and a ramp and a float. Uh, they redid the bulkhead. Um, when the inspector went down, the ramp and float was not there. Um, they decided that they didn't want the ramp or float, so before our conversation about less than stuff, they submitted a modification. So this is a modification to remove the ramp and the float from the permit, um, which is good with our Blue Book regulations, so I would recommend its approval. Okay. Okay. I'm fine. James is fine. I'm fine. Advance. Yep. We've just got the general permit applications for determination for the final <coughs> stamp plan review. So we have Trustee Pell has one for 309. 309, no quote. Come on up. And you handed in the stamp plan? Uh, yes. They were delivered and then emailed to um, Chris. Are you fine with it, James, the stamp? Yeah. Yeah. We received them. Then I guess that's Everything it. Matched. Everything matched. Everything matched. Yep. Everything's good? Yep. Okay. Got Thank it. you. Thank right. you. Sign in first. Yeah, sign in. Sign in and sign out. Yeah. 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 Well, we, the nuts and bolts and the hard part were done previous yeah. meetings. Yeah. So yes. today we take it easy on you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. All right, and then we've got six Holly. That's a first coastal for Trusty Parish. Same with this one, we received the stamp plans. Um, everything's in order. All right, so. Fine by me. Sounds good. good. Great. Good. I don't think Billy realizes he's up here. Do you need me? Nope. You guys did what you were supposed to do. Yes. You could have, you know. Could have been on your way. You were, you were all good. All right. So that concludes <laughs> our agenda for today. I do know we have uh, executive session that we have to go into. We're a little late getting into executive session. Um, thank you. Thank you. Now, that, that being said, I'd like to thank everybody that has attended our nuts and bolts work session, and I will request that we adjourn this meeting and. Uh, Go into executive session for the purposes of discussing personnel and litigation. Second. Seconded, Trustee Warner. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, meeting adjourned. We're going to second.